on episode five of Holy sh**, we've got a computer case so epic that it had to be delivered on a pallet rather than via normal means. So of course, we've brought with us the only tool suitable to open such a thing, chopsticks. The GTX 980 Ti VR Edition from EVGA provides an industry-leading graphics experience as well as a five and a quarter inch bay with easy access inputs for your VR device. Learn more at the link in the video description. Okay, well, that was obviously completely stupid. Let's go with the more traditional knife to open this baby up. So inside this box is actually more than just a computer case. In fact, there's a case, a power supply, and a motherboard. Yes, my friends, this is the first time we've ever had a chance to check out one of Supermicro's bare bones server units that they sell. But this one is very special. One that I wish I'd known about a month ago when I was trying to do the seven gamers one CPU project. And the only way that I could figure out to put seven graphics cards into a single computer was to water cool the whole bloody thing with all this like custom nonsense and I had to find the one motherboard on earth that would work, etc., etc., etc. No, my friends, there was an easy way to do it all along. All I had to do was get one of these bad boys. <sighs> oh, cool, they actually like pre-modded it for me. So let's, let's pull this out. Let's pull this out. Check this out. Check this out. Oh yes, my friends. Yes, my friends. That is exactly what it looks like. The entire rear of a 4U chassis taken up entirely by expansion slots. All right, my friends. So let's take a quick tour of this absolute beast of a monster. This is, I'm going to read it off it, the Supermicro 4027GR-TR, which actually, which actually isn't the right thing. They told me they were sending the TRT, the one with the 10 gigabit network interface built in. Maybe they included like an upgrade module or something. So first of all, this is cool. It includes four 1600 watt power supplies. Yes, friends, that is for all kinds of crazy power delivery, along with redundancy, which is important in any kind of a server environment. You can see there are these tiny, slim little units here. Let's, uh, let's see if we can read this baby. Yeah, this is the DPS 1600 CB. Uh, so the output is actually 1600 watts max. If, oh, this is interesting. I have never seen a discrepancy like that before. So at 120 volt input, it's 1000 watts max. And at 240 volt input, it is 1600 watts max. Very, very interesting. So I'm gonna have to make sure I run this baby on uh, 240 volt input. But in the meantime, let's see if Supermicro included like an upgrade module kit or something like that. Uh, these are our rails. These are those really nice rails that I like. So we're gonna go ahead and rail mount this baby in the rack. And then in here, I'm hoping to find, um, Well, nothing apparently. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, well, let's open it up then, I guess. Oh, but first, no, a tour of the front. So there's more to this. There are more tricks up this baby's sleeves than just a bunch of video cards. So this server will actually be taking the place of two servers because in addition to accepting up to eight dual slot video cards, it can also handle with these two and a half inch sleds, 24 SSDs. So this will be completely taking over Wanix server's duties in addition to being the new output render station 
that we never actually properly finished because we were trying to combine that one's duties with our ingest station and that ended up causing instability issues due to different versions of Adobe Premiere from different years operating at the same time. Eh, long story, anyway, it was kind of ugly and we are looking for a better way to do this. So, toolless uh, top, it looks like. Let's find out if we can get this baby off. Oh, no, we need to unscrew some things. So it's only, it only pretends to be toolless. Check out this modification. That spoiler is actually there for a reason and I will explain it in a little while here. Oh, oh yes. That, that is fun. So uh, here, let's try, and, let's try and sort these babies out a little bit, see what, we got, see what we got going on here. So this motherboard supports two LGA 2011 3 CPUs. So we're gonna be putting our two 18 core 2699 V3s in here for a total of 36 cores. And on top of that, it supports a total of 12 DIMM slots. You can see they were testing it. They had, uh, it looks like 16 DIMMs in here before they sent it to me. So 12 DIMM slots per CPU for a total of 20 for DIMM slots. That means with the 32 gig DIMMs that Kingston sent us for seven gamers, one CPU, we could put 32 times 24, whatever that works out to, inside here. This is another really cool feature that I wish would make its way to the desktop. Check out these fans. These are, uh, no, these are not the counter spinning fans. So these are just regular old 92 millimeter fans, except for one thing. Do you notice that? I just pulled it out. Where was the connector? Servers have had this forever. Hot swap fans. So you just thunk them in and boom, look at this. You've got little slots all over the place here for all these different fan connectors. Check this out. And you can see they've actually got two stacks of them, one in front of the other in order to give these puppies pretty much unlimited static pressure. So they're pulling all that ventilation in uh, from these holes in the front here. Whoop, hold on. Oh, try not to drop this. From these holes in the front here, as well as through where those SSD mounts go. So they gotta have a ton of static pressure because these puppies are not just, you know, cooling some run of the mill computer. We're talking 36 processing cores, a bunch of RAM, and up to, yes, this is where life gets really interesting. Up to eight graphics cards, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, each of which can be dual slot. And then in addition to that, it can handle another three expansion cards of whatever type you desire. So I actually guess nothing would prevent you from putting 10 in here if you really, really wanted to, which is, um, which is sort, of, sort of bananas. So let's go ahead and uh, see what it'll look like with all those installed. Okay, you wanna come with me while I go retrieve graphics cards? All right, so uh, let's pick some video cards, shall we? Let's go with, uh, what do we got here? I don't know, some kind of 290 or 390 or something. All right, what else we got here? Ooh, a GTX 580. Sure thing, no problem. What else we got? GTX 980, yeah, let's take one of those. And, uh, ooh, a GTX 780 Ti. That sounds pretty good, we got a good, uh, Good representation of the uh, market share of these two graphics card companies. All right, let's take these back and get them installed. Don't trip. One really cool thing I wanna point out before we get any further in though is that most of what you see up here is actually just like a, like a, like a dummy board. Like this is like a daughter board. It's not, there's not a ton of logic on it actually. Um, it installs into the motherboard which is below See down here, using it looks like four hard PCB bridges down here, and then that's what does all the controlling. So it's actually all mapped out for you. So here's CPU one, here's CPU two, and then all of these are labeled right here. So this is CPU one slot one, PCIe 3.0 16X. CPU one slot 10? Okay, well the numbering doesn't make a ton of sense to me so far, but it goes one, 10, nine, eight, uh, uh, seven, six, five, anyway. So it says CPU one, CPU two, and it's all kind of spelled out for you like that. So let's start installing video cards. AMD and NVIDIA, 
living together in perfect harmony. I don't know how that song goes, but I think you guys get the reference. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to find enough video cards to fill this thing up. This is ridiculous. Okay, so before we put any more in, I wanna take a short break and give you guys a better appreciation of the scale of what we're dealing with here. This is a normal ATX motherboard. It can fit four graphics cards total if you include one here and if you install one in the very bottom slot and have it overhang the bottom of the board. So it'll look a little something like that. This is what we're dealing with here. It's ridiculous. So let's keep the ridiculousness up. Let's put some more graphics cards in. Let's put one here. Wow, that's a long card, but it fits just fine. Let's put one here. Let's put one here. Oh, balls, this is a stupid modified one from Scrapyard Wars that I'll just move it. See, it's not a standard width, but that's okay. There are so many different spots for graphics cards. Server stuff, all about that convenience. No PCI Express locks. You wanna pull a card out, boom, you pull it out. No big deal. Right there. Okay, Linus. But what about that thing you promised us before? You said you'd explain why this thing is a frickin' humpback whale. Now, just because we can install, you know, 6990s, like crazy long cards like this, doesn't mean that you can install anything you want in a system like this, and we are somewhat limited in terms of the height of our graphics cards. Because one of the U's, so U is your vertical, vertical measurement of height for a system like this, one of the U's is taken up by all those power supplies here at the back, with only three left for graphics cards. That means any cards that are taller than standard are not going to fit within that 4U enclosure size. What that also means is that any cards that are designed with their power plugs coming out of the top of the card like this would interfere with a flat top panel, which is why we got this modified humpback one there we go that is going to take up a little bit of space above our server so let's go ahead and make sure that that actually fits okay yes that fits perfectly with all of our graphics cards love it so we've got big plans for this thing. We're gonna be doing a video where we explore uh, who makes the best GPU for video encoding in Premiere. So we're gonna do like an AMD versus Nvidia head to head and show a bunch of different classes of GPU, find out if you even need a super powerful one. We're gonna be doing one where we have eight game streams running off of a single machine at a time. That is gonna be flipping sick. And finally, we are going to be maybe, actually you guys let me know if you wanna see this, but maybe doing a showcase of the final build that I do in here with the 24 SSDs. Maybe it'll be like a follow-up holy episode rather than a normal release uh, with all the SSDs as well as all the graphics cards that we end up putting into it. And on that subject, iFixit.com, your complete DIY electronics repair solution. From their 19,000 free step-by-step -step repair guides to their huge inventory of replacement parts and tools, iFixit has got your repair needs covered. And they've got all kinds of great stuff. I use all their stuff all the time. I actually do. People are always like, Linus, iFixit product placement, oh, right there. No, actually, I was, I was just using it. Today's highlight is their all new, completely reimagined ProTech Toolkit. It now includes their new new 64-bit driver kit, which replaced the former 54-bit driver kit, meaning fewer roadblocks if you don't have the right bit. It's held in with magnets now. The casing is more durable. They've actually got some new prying tools and all the things that we have come to expect in the old Protect Tool Kit that are super handy. Whether it's a metal spudger or an ESD safety strap, it's all in there. And the best part is it's backed by iFixit's lifetime warranty. But wait, there's more. There's a new best part. If you guys head over to the link in the video description, ifixit.com slash Linus, and use offer code Linus, you can save five bucks on a purchase of $50 or more. So check it out and get hacking, building, and repairing today. Well, not quite today. They do have to ship it to you, but very soon. So thank you for checking out this episode of Holy Shit, our new 36-core 
8 GPU machine. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, then like it. But if you disliked it, go ahead and dislike it. But if you did enjoy it, maybe consider getting subscribed, buying a cool shirt like this one, or even becoming a contributor through our community forum. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering, gee, what should I watch next? Hmm, great question. Maybe you should go check out the previous episode of Holy Shit where we took some like dish Wi-Fi things and beamed a wireless internet signal across our parking lot. It's actually pretty freaking cool and you can check it out up here. Oh yeah, the other way to support us is also up here. Changing your Amazon bookmarks with our affiliate code. That helps us out a lot.